Now, we got an email here from Jasmine about public speaking. Hey, AJ and Johnny, love what you guys are doing. I recently got promoted into a managerial role, and this requires me to do a presentation about once a month. I'm good at my job, but I get very nervous when I have to speak in front of a room full of people. And especially since I'm the leader of that team, I don't want to look insecure. Any advice on how I can work on that? P.S. If you could do a month about leadership skills, that would be highly appreciated. And we will be tackling that yes. shortly here, Jasmine. So with our public speaking coach and expert here, Michael, what are your thoughts for Jasmine? Preparation, preparation, preparation. Um, whenever I coach someone to get ready for a stage, the biggest problem the biggest misconception that people have is that what you do is you write something down and you go up on stage or in front of an audience and you talk. And unfortunately, that's not going to cut it. And going through your talk once or twice, is not going to cut it either. You need to be really solid in your talk so your mouth does the talking, Jasmine, and your head can be free for gestures, checking your tonality, checking your eye contact. And you don't want to be in front of your team thinking, what, what do I have to say next? What was the next thing? This needs to be something that is prepared beforehand. It's, it's that simple. It's a lot of work. And that's why good speakers are hard to find. But I will say that this gets easier with time because the more you do this, the more fluid it gets. And at one point, you'll be able to get up in front of your team and not worry about, you know, preparation too much. I want to say a big thing for me after doing Dale Carnegie public speaking is realizing that whenever we're in front of a room, we tend to speed up our cadence. The mm -hmm. nerves get to us and all of a sudden we're, we're talking faster than the audience can follow along. And it was funny. I was out with uh, Amy and her friends uh, uh, this past weekend and they were asking the story of how we met. And I got into telling the story and they were all blown away by the story of how Amy and I met and they were like, wow, you're such an amazing storyteller. And that's a skill I've had to hone. I've told that story now in front of <laughs> multiple rooms at least a hundred plus times. I know exactly where the audience is going to be on the edge of their seat. I know exactly where I'm going to get the laugh and I know exactly where I need to really hold and pause for the drama to build. But that came through practice. That is, to your point, Michael, not something that I can script out saying, okay, this is going to be a dramatic pause. This is when mm -hmm. the audience is going to be roaring with laughter. We don't know that until we've practiced the material, not only ourselves in front of a mirror, but in front of an audience. And there is a great resource to practice your public speaking in front of an audience. And that is Toastmasters. We recommend it to all of our clients as an opportunity if you don't have classical public speaking training and you don't have an opportunity to really practice in front of an audience, that is a space where you can get that ability to read the room so that you aren't just delivering words to a bunch of people, but you're managing the emotions. You're using pause yeah. and tension to your advantage. And certainly, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to guess there's a high percentage that you listen to other podcasts that are led by comedians, probably even Mr. Rogan, as it seems that everyone listens to him these days. But, you know, Joe gives you what's interesting and fun about Joe, certainly when he has his comedian friends on, is you get a kind of behind the scenes look at the work that goes into that. And I don't think that was ever shown to this degree in history, at least on a, on a mainstream sort of level. And, you know, AJ, you and I went to see Jim Jeffries a few years ago. And I remember that he was working on jokes that didn't end up into a, to a special that we heard again about a year and a half later that he was working on. And, and as you were saying, you don't know when this, the, what the audience's reactions are going to be through the story. And you just can't get up there once and tell it and t get the knowledge. And then, then that's the joke. It has to be done multiple times. And mm. this is why comedians look for those opportunities to tell their jokes, to get up in front of that crowd, taking on open mic lights, jumping on at the comedy store uh, last minute, uh, letting them know, hey, I, I need to work on my material. I need, I need uh, 15 minutes here. Uh, and 
And to, so for Jasmine to get excited and look for those opportunities to practice storytelling, to, to practice whatever those opportunities are to get in front of people and speak because it's in, in those moments that you're going to start allowing that anxiety and nervousness to start to dissipate. And it's only going to be through those moments that that's going to happen. There is nothing else that you can do. Yeah. And you know, with the boot camp experience, the week long program here in LA, Johnny and I are public speaking me on Tuesday, you on Wednesday. And, and it is a performance. It is getting up on stage to share all of the teachings that we have here at the art of charm. But what's so great about it is it provides us that opportunity for practice so that when we do get invited to talk to bigger audiences, to go on other stages, we've had that opportunity in front of the room. So that really is key with all of this practice. So there's the preparation and there's the real world experience. And when those two things come together, you can become a sterling public speaker.